President Donald Trump is returning to the U.S. today after signing an agreement with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Singapore. The past does not have to define the future. Yesterday's conflict does not have to be tomorrow's war. And as history has proven over and over again, adversaries can indeed become friends. The two leaders met privately for an hour, then signed an agreement the president insists will lead to major changes on the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. wants North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons program, and North Korea wants economic relief and security guarantees. President Trump also says that Kim Jong un agreed to destroy a major missile testing site, but that is not in the signed agreements. And when he was asked whether he'd invite Kim to the White House, the president said he absolutely will, but it will be down the road. So WCCO chief political reporter Pat Kessler joins us now. And Pat, no matter how you feel about this summit and all the criticism around it, this was a historic event. What do you make of it? Yeah, it really was. It was remarkable. It's hard not to be encouraged by this, encouraged that the president of the United States is meeting with the North Korean leader to try to talk about denuclearization. By any measure, that is a huge impact on the rest of the world. So I could not stop watching this last night as it was unfolding, watching all of this happen. There were so many images, of not just the handshake, which itself was historic, but looking at the North Korean and American flags lined up behind mm -hmm. them, all of it was historic, something we've never seen in our lifetimes. And I guess we all hope, we all hope that this works out for the best. Right. Pat, something we haven't seen a lot in this presidency was a long press conference. The mm -hmm. president stood and answered reporters' questions for over an hour, including yeah. one asking the president about uh, giving up too much to call the meeting with Kim Jong-un. Let's take a listen. We haven't given up anything other than you're right. I agreed to meet. And I think the meeting was every bit as good for the United States as it was for North Korea. So, Pat, the president's talking about the idea of, of validating North Korea right. on the international stage, showing Kim sure. Jong-un as an equal. Is that a big concession? Well, I think it is. Uh, I am old enough to remember uh, President Obama when he suggested all of this, and he was hammered for it. He was going to meet with the North Koreans without any preconditions. I remember all of that. If we want peace, uh, the president says that you have to talk to them, and that's probably true. The question is, what are we giving up? Uh, this was really squishy. We don't know what we're getting, they what we're giving up. talked about war games, maybe, yeah. putting it into that. And apparently that is a surprise to our North, or South, South Korean Korea. allies. The president calls the military exercises uh, in the South China Sea and over by North Korea. He calls those war games. Well, that was a surprise to South Korea. president also suggested that he wants to pull all American troops out. That's a win for North Korea, and certainly China wants that as well. So mm -hmm. there's a lot we don't know about what is coming out of this historic meeting and possible agreements. All right, not a lot of detail yet. But, yeah. Pat, we do know there's been a lot of human rights violations in North Korea for many, many years. President Trump... Yep was also about, asked about this several times last night. Let, let's take a listen to what he said about it. Sure. Things will change. I think I've helped them. There's nothing I can say. Uh, all I can do is do what I can do. We have to stop the nuclearization. We have to do other things, and that's a very important thing. So at a certain point, hopefully, you'll be able to ask me a much more positive question or make a statement. But uh, not much I can do right now. At a certain point, I really believe he's going to uh, do things about it. So do the human rights violations just kind of take a yeah. back seat for now when we're talking about denuclearization? Well, that's what it appears the Trump administration would like to do. Now, the United States has always, for the last 50 years, linked human rights to advances with other countries, to agreements with other countries. I happened this morning to reread the United Nations report on human rights violations in North Korea. It's horrific. It's terrible. It's excruciating all of the human rights violations that Kim Jong-un uh, and his father and his grandfather engaged in in North Korea. Executions for misspelling the name of the supreme leader. All of these human rights violations, according to the United Nations, could actually be crimes. You could be charged with it. So the question is, what is the balance? Is denuclearization uh, more important than human rights violations? I think that's a debate 
we're going to see over the next few weeks, months, and even years. Right. I mean, it's still a lot more negotiating sure. to go through, too. Yeah, and we don't have any agreements at all right. other than a handshake agreement, again, which is historic in itself. All right. Thanks, Pat. We're going to see you in the you news bet. tonight at 5 and 6.